other interesting questions. Now, if there's a single senator in this chamber who knows the last four digits of their voter ID pin, I will buy you a beer when we, if we reconvene, I mean, assuming that this debate eventually does end, when we reconvene in 2021, I will buy you a beer if any senator in this chamber knows the last four digits of their voter ID pin. I definitely don't know mine. The other thing about the, the voter ID pin to keep in mind, by the way, is that this, this Generation Z that's coming up, I'm not Generation Z myself, I'm an old millennial, uh, but there's, a, there's actually a Generation Z guy over in the house, Joe Mitchell, ask him about his friends, he'll tell you, a lot of the Generation Z kids, they don't drive. They don't have driver's licenses, so they need this, this voter ID pin in order to fill out the ABR, in order to be able to vote by mail. Now, the thing that's interesting about what Senator Yoakum raised earlier about this, this issue with the last four digits of the Social Security number being put onto the ABR rather than the last four digits of your, your voter ID PIN number is that if the applicant, and here's what it says in Section 125, this is new language, if an applicant does not have current access to the applicant's voter verification number, the commissioner shall verify the applicant's identity prior to supplying the voter verification number by asking the applicant to provide at least two of the following facts about the applicant. One, date of birth. Two, the last four digits of the applicant's social security number. Three, residential address. Four, mailing address. Five, middle name. Six, voter verification numbers defined in paragraph C. So it's quite possible that the information that will be needed under this proposed language in section 125, this new paragraph D, will actually be on the absentee ballot request form when it's mailed in. So Senator Smith, if you'd yield to us a quick question, I'd, I'd like to understand if this would be applicable and allow the, the ballot to be sent out. Senator Smith, will you yield for a question? Yes, how are you? You're in order, Senator Walls. Well, thank you very much, Senator Smith. So, so Senator Smith, we've been going through this, this analogy of contacting the credit card company, uh, both in the debate last week and, and just earlier this morning. Um, the, the information that would have to be provided to prove the verification of the applicant per the language in this bill includes the last four digits of the applicant's social security number and the date of birth. And so if the ABR comes in, and it has the date of birth on it, and it has the last four digits of the applicant's social security number, would you still have to send the notice out to try and get the quote unquote correct information back in, or are we good to go and you can send the ballot out? Uh, well, it would not be correct information because the four digit pin number is not correct. So this is about trust, but verify. So the auditor would then need to go through the process of contacting them, which would be by phone, email or mail to pr get the correct information. Well, so in this case, what you're saying is we don't have the correct information on the voter identification pin specifically, but we'll go through the step, we'll, we, we open up, we'll open it up, we'll send them the letter, it gets there, it takes a couple days, they get it, comes back, they open it back up. Now, even though we had the information that we needed all along to prove the identity with the four digits of the social security number, the date of birth, and maybe the middle name, but we had the address wrong, now we're good to go, we've gotten it back. Even though the very same information that we would need to verify the address was actually there on the ABR the whole time. Well, the absentee ballot request form needs to be filled out correctly. If someone puts inaccurate information, they would have to go through the steps. This is about trust, but verify. Auditors cannot assume that this is the correct person. Just like you need to show your ID when you go to the polls, we need to make sure this is the right person, and you do that by having the four-digit PIN or the IRA driver's license number or the non-operating ID number. All right. Thank you, Senator Smith. I appreciate it. What, what I hope we just illustrated is that clearly, even if the information that is under this new law is being provided on the ABR when it comes in, if to Senator Bolton's example or Senator Yoakum's example or Senator Peterson's example, just one small thing is off, but the information that you would need to verify the applicant's identity under the new law is on the ABR. Even if all that is true, we are going to add several days to the process of sending a note back out and a note coming back in. 
And what occurred to me just a little bit ago is that today's actually, it's already Sunday. Now, Father's Day was not really a, a prominent holiday in my household growing up, but Father's Day is in a week. And if you haven't already started thinking about what your Father's Day gift is going to be, well, then congratulations. You understand the challenge that we have here. When you've only got a 10-day window outside of the election to get your absentee ballot in and get your ballot back, you know, I presume not everybody in this chamber has finished their Father's Day shopping. And there can be a lot of voters who, when they have these extra days tacked onto this process by this law, are not going to be able to vote by mail. So, Mr. President, I urge a no vote. I think this is a bad bill for Iowans, and I think especially in the middle of a pandemic, we should be making it easier to vote by mail, not harder. Thank you.